Greetings. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the central locking relays in this wonderful pristine example of a 3 Series BMW. In this model the relays are part of the GM5 module that sits behind the glove box and controls amongst other things the central locking and the electric windows. To get at it there are six screws. One at the side, along the top here, here and here, one tucked away in the other side and one more underneath by the door. Once that's done you can carefully remove the glove box to reveal the white GM5 module tucked away in a plastic cradle. The first plug to be removed is fitted with a sliding latch. Pushing this about half an inch to one side releases the plug. The next plug has a white latch held down by a black catch. Push down the catch, pull out the hinged latch and the plug pops out. And the last plug comes out the same way. The whole cradle needs to be lowered in order to remove the module. To do this, undo the black plastic nut at the bottom and then release the two top hinges by pushing them away from you. Bend the catch down and the module slides out. Let's take a closer look. Here's the module. If you want a size comparison, it's a standard VHS cassette. To open it, we just pop these clips here. It opens like a cigarette packet. And then we have these clips here, which if I pop these four here and start to pop these ones as well. That should start it sliding through. These ones as well. Takes a little bit of coaxing. And out. That's what's inside. We have 12 relays. I know you're thinking, hang on, I'm only seeing six relays. That's because these two are double relays. There's a relay there, one there, one there, one there. Same for these. And these also have double relays in there. These are the ones we're interested in. These are the central locking ones. The fun bit you get then is taking them out because these holes are soldered through. It's a double sided board so you're going to get all the solder out and for that you do need a decent soldering unit. This is what I'm using. This is a 50 watt temperature controlled soldering iron. And this is an 80 watt desoldering iron. Same as a soldering iron, heats up except this one has a vacuum pump which sucks up through the hole in the end of the nozzle. Here's how I do it. Take the iron, 
press it down on there, let it melt the solder, and then <coughs> suck it through and repeat for the rest of the pins. Some of the connections do have a lot more copper to deal with, so they take a little longer to heat up and desolder. Think you got all the solder out? Make sure the pins are all moving freely in those holes. So you don't want to pull the whole centers through when you remove the relay. You want the relays to almost fall out. And it's very important not to rush this. Don't try and cut corners, don't pull the relay out before it's ready to come out. You may find that the relays are stuck down with some conformal coating, in which case you might have to give them a little bit of coaxing to get them to pop free. Once you've taken the relay out, inspect it for any signs of copper tracks being lifted up. You see this one's taken up a little bit there, but in this case it doesn't matter because it's that pin there, and that's connected on the underside anyway, that's where the con connection actually goes. You check for things like that, and you can also see where I've managed to lift a track up here. It turns out this one goes to that pin there but it also goes to these pins up here anyway. So I'll be able to just bridge that up later on. So I'll just remove that out of the way altogether. Right, now the relays are out. I'm gonna clean these contacts up a bit more. Get the last of the solder out. the board ready to take the new relays. If you do break out any of the through holes it's not the end of the world because as you can see a lot of them do connect together so you can just bridge the contact across to one of the neighbouring ones. Right, we've got our relays ready to go in. The easiest way to do this is one at a time, put the relay in place on the board. And rest it on something like this pair of pliers. So the weight is on the relay that will hold the pins in place and make it easier to solder in. Now I did break a track earlier on, so I'm going to bridge that using a fresh piece of wire. low current connections so I can get away with quite a skinny piece of wire. There we go. And I'll just do a quick continuity check now to prove that the pins are working okay. I haven't knackered anything up. Pin there.
all present and correct. One fixed board. Just need to put the board back in its case now. There are runners at the side of the case. The board rests on those. Slides home. There are other runners further in. It slides under those. So all the way through. Just gently guide the sockets through at the far end. Until it clips in. Done. That's ready to go back in. Fitting is obviously the exact reverse of the installation procedure. Ensure the latches are secure because the last thing you want is for the plugs to fall back out. Once that's done, close the doors and try the central locking. Don't forget to try the boot. If you're happy that everything's okay, clip the cradle back in place and refit the glove box. You just saved yourself a very expensive trip to the dealer. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this useful.